what we're about to learn today is about um, how to design beams. The first step that you need to take in the design of the beam and the second step, what do you need? Um, we'll talk about all of that. And this involves a little bit of calculation. So this is a calculation um, topic. Okay. Okay, so here we are. The beam design and analysis. Okay, so we're just gonna get into it. Uh, this is where this picture is showing where beams are used, buildings, certain. In fact, every building needs a beam. So by the end of this class, define what is meant by beam. You already know what a beam is. We've discussed it in our earlier classes, um, but this will be just a recap. So it will be a, just a quick recap. Uh, distinguish between different types of beams and beam supports. Um, we have spoken about different types of beams as well. The most important one though for today's learning outcomes is that you have to learn how to draw a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram of a loaded beam. Loaded beam, I mean, it has loads on it. Point load, uh, UDL, you know, those are the types of loads that we are dealing with. So it's just introduction. Um, you already know these are simply supported beams, cantilever beams. Uh, 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 the last one. Um, OK, so I'm just going to go uh, right past this one. Um, also, this you're already aware, you know where beams are. This is a typical building. These are beams here with slabs in the middle. As you can see uh, from this picture here on the right and with columns. OK, so you can see the columns. These are two views of the same thing. OK, so which is interested on the beam design for today? OK, these outside lines. OK, these beams. These are just some different types of beams, simply supported beams. You already know them supported on both sides. Overhanging beam because it's overhanging there. It's got a little cantilever. Cantilever beam meaning it's uh, supported on one side. A continuous beam, meaning it has three or more supports, um, and so on. So you're already aware of this. Fixed beam, uh, it's fixed on both sides. Okay, meaning it's mounted to the wall. A, a static equilibrium, um, the state of an object in which the forces applied counteract each other so that the object remains stationary. OK, so for this one, what it's saying is that for an object to remain stationary, meaning for it not to move, it has to be in equilibrium. If it's not in equilibrium, that thing is moving. OK, for as long as it's moving, it's not going to be in equilibrium. It only reaches equilibrium if it's static. So that's what we're talking about. So equilibrium means that for every force, there is a reaction force, a opposite reaction force that is keeping it in equilibrium. So as we can see from this picture, um, this member, this box, this, this square is in equilibrium because as you can see, the top load is balanced by the bottom one. The one on the right is balanced by the one on the left. And then the moment on the right is balanced by the moment on the left. These curves, they stand for moment. OK. So now if we have, if you look at this picture here, a force is applied on this beam. Let's go back. Sorry, a force is applied on this beam, this red force. Now, this force for this member to be static, it has to be in equilibrium, and for it to be in equilibrium, it means it has to have 
two forces that are balancing it. Now those two forces, because this is a simply supported beam, are shared among these what we call reaction forces. They are just reacting to the applied load so that th they are equal in size as the applied load. Okay, for example, we'll do a simple example right now where you can see that this force um, is shared equally amongst uh, these reaction forces if it's exactly in the middle. Okay, so a moment is uh, created when a force is acting at a certain distance. Okay, so for example, the moment is a force times the perpendicular distance of that force. Perpendicular, I don't have to explain what that means to you right now. You learned it in high school, but it just means between the force and the distance, there must be an angle of 90 degrees. All right, so a moment is always given by force times perpendicular distance. Force times distance gives you a moment. Remember that formula. Remember that formula. Force times distance gives you a moment. OK, so let's look at a simple example. There we go. So here we have a simply supported beam once again. Uh, the force here is 10 kilonewtons, as you can see. Um, and then to balance this 10 kilonewtons, you will have two reaction forces. One there and one there on A and C. And now depending uh, on the distances, so, so here we can see that actually the, the force the applied force of 10 kilonewtons is actually right in the middle, meaning the reaction forces then will share 5 kilonewtons each. Okay, 5 this side and 5 this side to balance, to make sure that there's a balance. So uh, there's 10 kilonewtons coming down, and if I add these 5s up, 5 plus 5 is also 10, 10 going up, that means it's member is not moving, it's static, it's in equilibrium. All right, so now drawing a shear force diagram, all it means is that, okay, we always start from the left and walk towards the right and you walk the force, okay? May the force be with you. That means you're walking the force. So what is gonna happen here is that we're gonna go up five kilonewtons because we starting on the left, you see we have five kilonewtons on this reaction at A, so we go up five kilonewtons up like that. Okay, that's why we have a five over there. And then that five is sustained until it reaches this point of B, where now it has to go 10 kilonewtons down. So it's going 10 kilonewtons down from the five, so it goes five, it reaches a zero mark, and then it goes to the negative side to do another five. And that's why we have a negative five over there. Okay, and then it's sustained until it reaches this point of C, and then it goes five up again. goes five kilonewtons up and then it goes back to zero. So this is balanced. Okay, your shear force is balanced because it starts at zero and then it ends at zero. Okay, now let's look at the bending moment diagram. Now remember your bending moment formula. Remember your moment? It was force times distance. D, well, it has to be perpendicular, but I'm just going to say force times distance. So if we're standing at A, we have a force at the A of five kilonewtons, but the distance is zero because we're just standing there. So 
we got zero. OK. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to say for you to make it simpler, you, whenever you do a bending moment diagram, you stand on that particular point and you look towards your left. Always look to your left and see what's going on there. OK, so when I'm looking to my left, there's no forces on my left here. It's just blank. OK, so we are at zero. Now I'm standing in the middle. OK, standing right there at B. Now, if I look to my left, OK, I can see that I have a force of five kilonewtons. OK, a force of five kilonewtons that is actually at a distance of one. So I'm going to say five times one. And then I get five. So then my point there then is five. Kilonewton meter because remember we multiplying a force which is in kilonewtons and a distance which is in meters. And then now we come and stand here at C. We look to our left once again. OK, and we can see that uh, when we look to our left, our force. First of all, we have five. We have five. Times and it's at a distance of two. OK, and. Uh, um, let's just say going up is, is a positive, so we will keep it like that. Going up is positive. Um, and then now going down is positive, yeah, is negative rather. So which means is that to add this 10, then we're going to say negative 10 kilonewtons times a distance of from C. We're still standing at C of 1 that's going to be equals to zero. That's why our bending moments then there at that point of C is zero. Because five times two is 10 and 10 times one is 10 as well. So 10 minus 10 is zero. OK, just remember every time you do your bending, there are many ways of doing a bending moment diagram. You can also just simply take the area under the shear force diagram. So this area here. This area is five times uh, five. That's five going up. And then this one, it's length times breadth, right? It's times one, which is five. So then, which means when you're standing at that point there, it's five kilonewtons per meter. So either method works, OK? It's just that uh, this one gets a bit trickier of area uh, for some people, so but depending on you, which one you choose to be better. OK, so what I want to do now is um, I've prepared another example that is much more complex than this. OK, so I am going to end this show. Um, I'm going to end this show and then I will. What I want to do is uh, share my screen for the other one okay so that you can see i worked it out on my hand um, so that you can see step by step how a complex problem is approached all right so let me just do that right now and share the screen for you okay just hold on let me check something something i need to make sure that i put the sound on i include the sound because if i don't you won't hear anything okay there we go playing right now so let's get right into it share force diagrams just select the name suggests has to do with the forces okay we have been given forces five kilonewtons one kilonewton per meter, five kilonewton, seven kilonewton, and one kilonewton. Okay. 
So we will identify some critical points. That's the first thing to do. We have a critical point there, critical point there, critical point, and critical points at the end. That's what matters. So the first critical point is that what we're going to do is a step by step force walking. We will force walk. So, for example, it says five kilonewtons moving up. That's the first force we encounter. So, we're going to move up five kilonewtons. Put our ruler there. We'll move one, two, three, four, five. Okay. There's our five kilonewtons. We moved up there, five kilonewtons. The second force we encounter is this UDL. It's one kilonewton per meter. Okay. And it totals a span of six kilonewtons. So it's one kilonewton per meter times six, which gives us six kilonewtons. Okay. So at this critical point, what we're going to do is that we've gone five. We're going to subtract the six, which gives us a minus one. So at this critical point, we are at minus one. And because it's a UTL, it's a diagonal movement. The UDL always moves diagonal when it comes to the shear force diagram. Let's just complete that. Right, so we are at minus one. Okay, at this space from here to here, there is nothing there. So we just move right across the horizontal line. We are constant. There is no movement. Now, we are moving another five kilonewtons going down. So what we're going to do now is move five from there. Okay. Let us count once again. We're going to count from, we're going to count five steps. So we move one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So having moved five, it's minus one, minus five, which gives us a minus six okay to the next critical point it's constant there is no movement there so we just move a constant just like that now we have a force moving up seven kilonewtons right so once again put our ruler we're going to count seven from that six so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which brings us there. So minus six plus seven gives us a one. That's a positive one. Okay? And from there to there is another constant movement. So we just draw it across like that and then from there it we move down one kilometer so we just go one that completes our shear force diagram it's negative this side it's positive there and it's positive there okay and these are all in kilonewtons okay kilonewtons and that completes our shear force diagram thank you very much now bending moment diagrams are based on your shear force diagram as well as your force diagram now the shear force diagram will help us to identify critical points because that's the first thing we have to do, identify critical points. Now, the ends 
of a bending moment diagram are always zero. So those are critical points where the shear force diagram crosses the zero line of the shear force diagram. That's a critical point as well. That's a critical point where if ever there is a big change, that is a critical point. Critical point there and a critical point there. Finally. Okay. Let's get into it. Now, moment, the formula for a moment is force times distance. Okay, so that is what we'll be looking for. Let's get right into it. The first force we encounter is this five kilonewtons. But we have a critical point right there. And that critical point is at a distance of five meters. So that's one meter there between these two points. It's one meter, just to note that. Okay, so let's start with this first critical point there. Set five. We need to calculate what is the bending moment there? Remember, a moment is force times distance. And we're going to take clockwise as positive. Okay? So, if we are standing here, okay? Or rather, let's go to our force diagram. If we're standing here, and then we are moving up, this first critical point here, and it moves up, it, it's going to move a clockwise direction, right? So that's positive. But this UDL here is pushing it down, and it's going to move an anti-clockwise direction, which means that it's going to be negative. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say we're going to have a force of five kilonewtons times a distance, remember we're standing there, and we have five kilonewtons times a distance of five meters. Oh, sorry, times a distance, let's start again. Five times five, and it's positive. But the UDL now, this is a UDL. It's we're given that it's one kilonewton per meter. So to convert this into a force, first of all, it's going to be negative. It's going to be one kilonewton per meter times a distance of five, which makes it five kilonewtons. And a UDL. Uh, always works out to a distance of half. So half of five is 2.5. So it's acting at half the distance times 2.5. That gives us, let's, let's get our calculator. We have Five times five minus one times five times two point five. That gives us twelve point five. Now that means that Parabolically, so this is a part of it's a parabolic movement. It's not straight up; it's curving like a parabola. Okay, our next critical point is that one there. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did here. We're standing here. The first force we encounter 
is that five. So we're gonna say five times, and it's moving a distance of six this time. Six meters, six. Minus, now the UDL is an entire six, so it's gonna be one kilonewton per meter times six. So, so that, that thing in the bracket represents the force alone. Times the distance of, remember, it always acts a distance of half. So half of six is three. Okay. Now let's put that in a calculator. We're going to have five times six minus one times six times three. And we get 12. That means at that critical point there, it's 12. We say our 12 is somewhere there. That's a parabolic or parabolic movement as well. Okay, now our next critical point is there, which is rather there. We'll do the same calculation. Okay, so we're standing here now. Our first force is five. So we're gonna say five times, and it's a distance, since we're standing there, it's two plus six. So it's a distance of eight. Distance of eight. Minus, Okay, so we're standing here. We have a UDL there. It's, it has a force of one kilonewton per meter. It, it travels six meters. So that represents the force alone, six kilonewtons, and it acts a distance of three, which is half. It's that half there. But since we are standing here, we also have to add this two. So it's three plus two, which is five. So the distance is five. Okay. Let's put that in a calculator. It's five times eight minus one times six times five and we get 10. Okay, so that means that that critical point there, we're down at 10. And it's not a parabolic movement, it's a straight line diagonal movement because it's not a UDL. So we just distance of 10. Okay, our next critical point is there. Okay, so likewise, it's five, a force of five at a distance of six plus two plus two, which is eight, 10. So we're gonna have five times 10 minus one times six. That's, that's, our, that's our force, but it acts at, remember at the middle there, so that's three, plus two is five, plus another two to take us back where we're standing, which is seven. Okay, now we have another one here. We're still standing here. This force is acting down as well, which is anti-clockwise, which means we subtract it. So it's gonna be five kilonewtons times a distance of two. Come here, minus five times two. 
get our calculator. We're going to have 5 times 10 minus 1 times 6 times 7 minus 5 times 2. And we get minus 2. Okay, so that means that our critical point here, we add right there, it's minus 2, okay? Because it's not a UDL, it's a straight diagonal line. We can use our ruler right there. 2. Now, at the end, it's always 0, so we can... To there, take us back to zero. It's positive there, it's negative there. That is now, that completes our bending moment diagram. Thank you very much. Well, that's it, that's it.